Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton. Those two, I mean, I'd rather do something else. Well, the thing is, and actually I think the Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton is a perfect example. It's like I'm assuming it's going to be an angle, not a match. Like I can't imagine Randy's going to go in and tie up with her. They're going to do high spots? Yeah, they're going to, you know, tackle, get it again, kid. But that's where if they have a good idea and if there is an actual really cool angle out of it, I'll find out listening to you and Dave, and you and I have relatively similar tastes in wrestling, so I, I get a really, re- relatively good idea from you. But it's like, if it's just going to be, you know, the giant mallet DQ Hell in a Cell thing, where it's just, you know, the biggest popcorn fart in the world, it's like, I'm not watching it. But if for some reason they go, oh, wow, they had a really cool idea, the effects they did with The Fiend was cool, I'm like, all right, I want to go back and see that. You know, and similarly, it would save me the effort if, you know, the only reason I wanted to watch, was it Revolution, was to see the big bomb. If someone tells me, oh, yeah, it didn't work, it was it was terrible, it's like, all right, well, maybe I'll skip it. But it, it's, it's all about just expectations, and it's interesting, and it's just a, a one point on Raw I'll hit. Before you go to Raw, I want to make one comment about Bliss and Randy Orton. I would like them to do one spot. <laughs> I want the bell to ring... I want Alexa to put him in a headlock, but like he just stands up tall, so she's like off the ground. With her feet kicking? Yeah. And then he walks her to the ropes and he shoots her off. And you know how Randy does that high leapfrog it like once every Where 10 t- years? <laughs> like he touches his toes? Yeah. I want him to do the <laughs> giant leapfrog and she just runs right under him without ducking. That's the spot. Yeah. Didn't even bend over. Yeah, she can, she can, you know, take a powder or whatever right after going under him. But that's the one spot I want. Then they can do all their bullshit and I'll turn it they- off. Okay, but but again, I don't want to talk in depth of Raw, but to this end, in that they worked me on Raw into not liking something that was good, in that I'm watching Raw when they started Lashley and Sheamus. First, I'm like, oh, hey, this is cool. And again, I, I, I personally know and really like Bobby, and it's like, you know, it's like, hey, this will be a good guy fight, and it's like, they're like 30 seconds in, and I go, Sheamus is in a big match on the pay-per-view. There's no way they're doing a finish. Oh, <laughs> you fool. And I stopped paying attention. Like, it was still on, but it's like, you know, I'll get my phone out, I'll check some things. It's like, I convinced myself that there's no way they're giving me a finish. So it's like, why bother investing in this match? And then they freaking gave me a finish. And I was like, crap, I wasted, I should have been paying attention. Where that's where if I would have waited and listened to your review and found out that they actually did a finish, I'd be like, oh, shit, well, I want to watch this then. So it, it's all about expectations and you know, there's stuff on the paper. Like, I'm actually the opposite of you in that I'm not looking forward to Drew and Sheamus. What? I hate last man standing matches. It's not right now. It was. Well, apparently right now it's just a match. Well, that's better. <laughs> I mean, I they could s- I, they, well, I was told it was going to be last man standing. No, this is your fault. But this was like two weeks ago. Now, there's a very good chance that, like, on the pre-show or something, they're going to announce, or on the actual show they will announce, it's last man standing. Because, God forbid, we sell any tickets or anything, or See, sell I Peacock thought, subscriptions. I thought for sure that they had announced it. And they do these a lot. For some reason, it's their new go-to. You know, they did the Kevin Owens one, they did the Edge Randy Orton one. And they almost always get bad reviews because it's, for the most part, all your near falls are a dude standing there for nine seconds. It's like, at least when it's a pinfall, it's like it's you cover him one, two. Oh, no, we move on. And that's where, you know, and you, you know, you, you got, you know, huge heat for for burying the last man standing match with with Randy and Edge. And it's like, I think that was the big primary reason why those who didn't like it didn't like it was a there was no fans for emotion and last man standing is a lot of standing around for nine seconds and they wwe's been doing a ton of these and i'm like i hate these matches can we do something else because i don't like guys standing there while we wait to see if a guy can stand up in nine seconds not only that but i mean like i like i was was the only one that didn't like that last man standing match I mean, if it was universally praised and I was the one guy that thought it wasn't very good, and not only that, like, they did a match without that stip, and it was one of the best WWE matches of the year. So that tells you it was a problem with the stip, not the dudes. Yeah, and they've been doing that stip a lot. So I I hope WWE comes up with a new end-of-the-feud stip because I think we really really need a new one because the last man standing, I'm done with. 
they started talking about is it Bet Kings? I don't know. But they started uh, talking about some uh, this Draft Kings. Draft that Kings. Is- Compulsive gamblers. They had some things to say here. There were only a few guys in the cage at the time, and they were down. So he escaped his pod early to take a gamble that he might be able to eliminate one of them. Which, by the way, did not pay off. But I was told, wait, Brian, it doesn't matter if the gamble pays off or not. I said, what? You're telling me that if you have a net worth of $500,000 and you see that it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Portland Trailblazers or whatever the Super Bowl might be, and you bet on the Seahawks. Somehow the Trailblazers win and you lose $500,000. Okay. You're broke, but you're telling me that you can go to your fucking wife and say, yes, dear, that's how professional gambling works. Do you know what your wife will say to you? She'll say, fuck you. We're divorced. (laughs) You compulsive gamblers. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.